I already know enough about what happened in China, I think, uh, to tell you they've done something wrong, which is they haven't allowed the world to fully understand how this thing began and they've covered it up. Now, what it actually leads to, that's what the world needs to know because the next one could be far worse than this. I mean, coronavirus sure. is terrible. COVID has been terrible. It has killed people. It's, but you've seen what it's done to our society and our country and the world. The next one could be much deadlier, much more disruptive. We, the, the, all, people forget all this research that China does is still going on right now. They're doing, as we speak, they're doing yeah. it today. It, it doesn't stop. This it, continues. It does not. You know, but don't worry, the White House is on the case because if China does not go along with another investigation and be more forthcoming and start spilling some beans, the White House is going to internationally isolate them. Well, look, I mean, I think that there's a couple problems there. The first is uh, most of the countries around the world think the way I do, right? I just said. All right, if you took, uh, if you went around and asked them, they all would say the same thing. They just won't say it publicly because all these countries, China has enormous leverage on them and economically. They need China economically. They're smaller economies and so forth. So it takes a very forceful position on the part of the United States for other countries to be willing to step forward. There are exceptions. Australia is being one of them and a few others. But generally speaking, look at Europe. It's not that these countries agree with China. It's that they don't want to speak out because they don't want to get hit with their own sanctions. They don't want yep. to get hit economically. But they need forceful American leadership in order to make these things happen. I don't think you've seen forceful American leadership on anything from the Biden administration so far, much less this. I remember, let alone Iran, what they're trying to do, begging to get back into a deal with one of the worst countries ever conceived. Uh, not the people, but the government. Uh, Senator, I remember what Congress did against Iran with sanctions that pushed the president to take action. You got this could do that again. I sense that if you made the effort, and I think you will, you'll get a lot of Democrats on board with this. Well, we're hoping to. Here's the bottom line. All we're asking for is that China open up and allow a full investigation because this is not just about punishing China, what happened in the past, okay? This is about preventing it from happening again. For all we know, at this very moment, the next great pandemic is being developed inside of a Chinese laboratory and they're using, they're doing it because they want to develop a vaccine or a cure. Yeah. But the thing infects somebody that works in that lab and they take it out and now the whole world gets hit. I get, I remind everybody, coronavirus is bad. There are worse things out there that could leak out if that's the way this happened. We need to know, the world needs to know because this is not a China issue. This is a global right. Issue. And if they didn't lie to us, we would have known what was going to hit us. We would have had a test ready for it, but they did. Uh, British scientist Peter Daszak has been removed from the COVID commission looking at the origins of the pandemic. This guy is an embarrassment. You watch him on 60 Minutes lie through his teeth saying, I believe the Chinese, even though I didn't see anything directly. Uh, every time he talks, there's some type of agenda there, and he's got direct links to the Wuhan lab. Now he admits there might have been bats there when he said there were no uh, bats there. This is long overdue. Yeah, sometimes these guys like to play God, right? And so when they, right. what they don't want, they want to do their research because they know what's good for humanity. They convince themselves of the exalted position that they're from sure. and in. And so what happens is now they're fearful. Oh my gosh, we don't want this thing linked back to the, to the kind of research we do. So let's do everything possible to sort of steer people away from sure. it and cover it up. And that's what this guy did. He rallied a bunch of scientists who didn't disclose their conflicts. Right. And the Lancet had to come back later and force many of these people to disclose their conflicts, including him. All right. Uh, one of the things you're working on you're asking the president of the united states for a waiver so that uh a football star at the navy school the academy uh navy star cameron kinley can play yep. for the bucks he needs a waiver what are the chances uh, and by the way this guy's going to join us uh in about uh, 20 minutes or so needs a waiver just to delay the military service right exactly so uh, you know any inclination that joe biden will sign that I don't know yet. The White House has been noncommittal, so we don't know yet. But here's the bottom line. People got to do it last year. Yeah. Right? There are people playing in the NFL. Malcolm Perry that was, came out of Navy plays for the Miami Dolphins. So last year they were allowed. So this sounds arbitrary. Where like last year's class, if you graduated last year, they're going to let you do it. If you graduate this year, you're not. The, he's not saying he's not going to do his service. He will. I also think this is really good for the service academies. There's mm -hmm. a lot of young men and women who hope that they might have a career in athletics who say, look, in the off chance that I get drafted or I get a chance to play professional sports, I, the reason why I don't want to go to the academy is I have to forfeit that yep. right now, four years ahead of time. So I think that allowing this man, young man to play isn't just fair because he's going to do his service. He's going to live up to his commitment. But allowing it is not just fair. It's good for the academies. It's going to make it easier for me and my colleagues here to find young men and women to step forward and be willing to be nominated and, and go to the service academies. Oh, it would be so wonderful if Joe Biden would give him that opportunity. He might not get an opportunity like this again, and he's going to serve. Yeah. He's going to join us later on in the show. All right. Well, Thanks we'll for doing that for him. That's very Thank nice you. of you.